Oh. Oh. Kelly Mantle. Oh, the worst contestant ever on RuPaul's oh. Drag Race. Oh. <laughs> no, we, we like kidding about that. She's the greatest. When I first... Uh, yeah, I, yeah, when I first started doing Connie in a sketch, we didn't you didn't have time to put on makeup when you're doing a 22 right. sketches in an hour yeah. type show. What you doing? So she really was the first, uh, when I started putting my first show together, uh, the first sister drag queen that I felt supported me and kind of really took a chance because I'm insane. I called her up and gave her the entire spill of the show without ever having met her. And then at the end of a 30 minute phone conversation where I did all the talking about myself, she was like, oh, well, honey, I'm in. Wonderful. God bless Kelly Mantle. Kelly Look Mantle. Out. Oh, it's oh, another shady one uh, for you. Y'all are so shady over here. Look at her. Look at her. It's talk for, shit about her. That's really what you should be. You need, you need uh, to look at her on a t-shirt in the back and you say, talk shit about her. <laughs> uh, well, you guys obviously had a moment on All Stars, and she on this show took responsibility for being a cunt. Oh, my God. Well, there was, <laughs> she, what, she said something at the table to Rue, and I was like, girl, you just threw me on that fucking bus. But uh, she was like, did I? I didn't know it. It was, it was interesting. It was very funny because because, you know, uh, we had to paint each other's faces and, uh, you know, we had to kind of explain it. We weren't allowed to touch it. We'd explain it. And she pulls out the littlest, tiniest, like from, you know, Macy's, you know, $50 foundation and pulls it out. And she goes, OK. And she goes, this is my foundation. I scooped a big old Mimi. I'm first right. size out. She goes, no, that's supposed to last me the whole season. I just, oh my God. I, I pull my own seven different color pan sticks going at it. Um, but you know, it worked out. We had those two dresses. They said, they said to us in the workroom, come out in two matching dresses. And she had that dress and I had my dress. And we said, well, psh, this is meant to be. Let's do it. And we get on the runway and the, one of the judges, the, I don't remember where she was. She said, do you feel sexy in this dress? So you fucking idiot. This is not a sexy dress. Right. This is a fun dress. <laughs> right. Um, but, you know, Pandora's talented, and uh, and uh, we get along just fine. All right. Lovely. Well, no well played. No shade. No shade. No shade. It's all right. None either. Look at him. Oh, oh for, God for is. For me? Yes. Oh, she's. <laughs> you know, because I was in all of those movies with Jennifer <laughs> Coolidge. <laughs> ah. Jennifer is uh, an old friend of my of Nora from the Nellies, and I can tell you the the greatest story I ever heard. Because you don't, you never could get a lot of stories out of Nora Burns, but, and if you're in New York, she has some shows. David's friend and Stonewall. Go check out her New York stories. That's the show. It's where people old as us go and tell their New York stories to the children. And you can know what it was like in that period before between Stonewall and MySpace or whatever it is. But Jennifer and Nora met on an audition for Jaws 2. Oh, wow. So imagine, if you will, how much we love Jaws 2. Now imagine if you could, if Jennifer Coolidge had gotten, hey, guys, shh. You know, I just, I like to imagine that, you know, she was Tina, Miss Amity. I like know. it too. Hey, man. <laughs> That's good. Hey, let's go swimming. Look at him. This oh. Is is this XL? That's XL. Well, oh. the, the one in the red is beautiful and highly photoshopped. Oh, she is. With I, this photo, that photo shoot, we did that in the desert. There's a ghost town that's between uh, here and uh, Vegas, and you can stop at. And we shot that, and those shoes killed us. Um, you know, it's it's a shame it didn't work out. It was like you know B52s meets ABBA with a little bit of the Spice Girls yeah. in there, and it was really fun. But they, you know, they wanted different things, and uh, we got call. We got a call to go on um, America's Got Talent. And they asked us to come, and I, I said, I'll ask the girls. And they said no. And so I told, and then, and while bitching about not getting bookings, it's very hard because right. here it was on Drag Race, so my recognition was everywhere. Yeah. And they're like, but we, you know, and they're wanting to do like the musician thing and take these gigs for like $5. I'm like, I can't do that. Yes. And so here comes America's Got Talent, and uh, they uh, said no, and I said, sorry, no. And America's Got Talent called the next week and said, we'd like you. Can you please reconsider? This went back and forth seven times. They said no. Wow. And that's when I knew. That's when I knew. I go, I go, I go you know, this is not going to work. We got to, you want exposure. This is it. You kidding me? So it didn't so work So you out. broke the band up. They, well, there Damn. was a little more. It was a little, oh, it was, it was, it was they actually gave me an ultimatum. And what was it? To get out. 
Wow. <laughs> they, <laughs> they, uh, Shit. Shady. Shady. They, uh, but they, you know, they wanted to be a serious, they were like, we're a serious pop group. I'm like, right. we're a fucking girl group with two women over the age of 30 and a drag queen. <laughs> and, you know, we're not the pussycat dolls. Right. Like, get over yes, it, kids. Like, right. this is campy and stupid. And, you know, and so it just didn't. And, you know, whatever, they're doing the thing and I'm doing my thing and it's good. Awesome. All yeah. right. <laughs>